Hi, I'm Denise Sultanian. I'm here at Blossom Hill Crafts. And today we're going to make this closed form pumpkin. Doesn't have to be a pumpkin, but that's what we're working on today. All right. So to start, I'm going to center my clay. And I'm making a large tuna can, I guess you would say. I've got really soft clay here. You can experiment with pumpkins with stiffer clay or soft clay and see what you like better. All right, once I'm centered, I'm gonna drill my hole in. The hole, I guess it's always important, but it's important that at the bottom of your pot, you don't leave too much clay. You wanna leave about an eighth of an inch. If you leave more, you're gonna have a really heavy pumpkin. So I'm gonna take a measurement here. I can go a little, I can go down a little bit further. I was about a quarter of an inch right there. I'm gonna go down a little further and then I'm gonna open up my pot. Just compress that rim a little bit. I'm gonna compress the bottom of my pot with my sponge. And I'm going to do my first pull. I like to do my first pull on the left side. I'm thinking about keeping that rim as small as possible because we're going to want to um, color that in. And I'm going to do another pull on the side. Before I do my next pull, I'm going to color in. When I color in, there's different ways to do it. I like to slowly move my hands up and squeeze that rim in. You can also do it with your knuckles if you want to. Middle finger, knuckle, and a thumb, two thumbs. But I like to use my whole hand. Let's do one more pull. Okay, great. So we've got our cylinder here. I'm going to get the water out of the bottom of my pot. And now we have a couple choices for how you'd like to belly out your pumpkin. You can use a rib, you can use your hands, or you can use a sponge on a stick. Actually, I will use to start with, I'm going to use my sponge on a stick. I'm going to belly out that pumpkin. I'm going to come back and use this tool again after I collar in. As you collar in, you can get some irregularities in the, in the top of the clay. So after you do a couple collars, you want to come in and do a pull. Now I'm going to collar in just small enough so or large enough so I can still get my sponge in there. I'm going to belly out my clay one more time, not too far. I don't want to have my pumpkin collapse on me. But I think that'll be good. Do a pull here. This top part of the pumpkin, I'd like it to become the stem. Coloring in. As I collar in, I also like to support the bottom of the pumpkin, especially with soft clay. All right, Let's see if we can close this. If you have a really irregular top, you can take your needle tool drag it, have it braced on your thumb, and drag the tool against your clay, and pull that top off. All right, just 
closed up my form. So we now have our pumpkin with an air bubble trapped inside, which is really fun because you can now play with that air bubble. You could make your pumpkin a little thinner. You could make it a little fatter if you want. That air bubble will help keep some of the shape to your pumpkin and it help keep it from collapsing. So pumpkins usually come in at the top and to create that, we're gonna poke a hole. Now it is important that during all the drying and firing process, you do have a hole. I won't keep this hole here. Later, I will put the hole in the bottom. So I've got a hole there. So now the air can get let out. I'm gonna gently press on the top here and I can feel my pumpkin collapsing. You can also push it down if you want to, and that's great. I'm happy with that pumpkin. I'm gonna take some of the extra clay off the side here. And now you can wire this off and let it get leather hard. So that's good the way it is. That's good, we can let that get leather hard. Let's check, let's make sure our hole hasn't closed up. Just gonna come in and check that hole, that's good. All right, so that is step one of the closed form pumpkin. And the next thing we're gonna do is, this, this part's kind of optional. I will take, these are some of the pumpkins I was working on. Get my hands clean here. Um, I sometimes like to put it back on the wheel. I'll just take a tiny bit, you know, the tiniest bit of water, just enough so that it gently sticks, that my pumpkin gently sticks on the wheel. And I'll put it there and I will trim, you know, maybe trim a little extra off. Sometimes I'll tap it to see if there's some thick or thin spots and you can come in and trim a little extra off. You might wanna be, obviously be careful that you don't trim too far. You can take some extra clay off. I also like to put in a circle up here at the top. And then for the texture of the stem, I'll use one of these scoring tools. Now the best thing is if you actually look at a real pumpkin. So once the pumpkins are in season and you can go get one, that'd be great. You can also use a picture of pumpkins. So you can really get a feel for what they're looking like. We're making the organic an organic form, which is great, so it does not have to be quote unquote perfect. It can be natural. And I like to put a little divot in the top of my pumpkin here. And so that's step two. That's kind of just cleaning up the form, but now we're gonna put in the details. I've started putting the details in on this pumpkin. You can see some of these ribs that I've got in there. And the way I do that is I take my thumb and I press it down. Be careful that you're not pushing, you know, if you have a thin spot, you don't want to push through, obviously. So just see where you can press. This one is a little bit hard. It's kind of stiffened up here a little bit, but that's okay. You can still see those ribs. Okay. Once you've got the ribs all the way around, you can take a wooden tool or a wooden trim tool and define those ribs a little bit, ribs a little bit more. Maybe you want, maybe you want more of a groove here. And to do that, you can take, you can take a ribbon tool and come in or a trim tool and come in and you can kind of flute it to give it more of that indentation and then come in with your um, wooden tools. So a final note, we were talking about the hole and the hole is really important. What I like to do at the end, once my pumpkin is all done, is I have this hole making tool. It does not have to be a big hole. It could be, you know, it could be a hole that you make that's a little larger than your needle tool. I would you know, consider making it that big, eighth of an inch in diameter. But I like this hole tool, it gives you a nice clean Nice clean look. And you can put your name on the bottom and your pumpkin is all done. I've got a couple here that I made. These ones are bisqued, obviously, so it's not, they're not done yet. And I'm thinking I'm gonna go crazy with the glazes. They might not be orange. If you do want orange, you can try this with Shogun. Uh, sometimes if you put it on thinner, you may get a chance of having orange. I iron oxided the stem and left it raw, did not glaze it. So good luck with your pumpkins. I hope they turn out and maybe I'll get to see some.